Hi guys and welcome to episode 5 of Ask Keith Mills. I hope you've been having a productive week and finishing loads of tunes. We've got a bunch of questions to get through so let's dive in. Okay, so our first question is from Marcus Madwick and Marcus says, I have a bass sample that I'm using in a track. I want to transpose it down a few notes, but when I do, the tempo of the sample slows down. I've tried various ways in both sampler and simpler, but to no avail. Why is this? Is there a way around it? Hi Marcus, how's it going? I hope you're well, buddy. So actually, in Ableton Live 9.5, it's solved. Inside of Simpler, you've now got a warp option. You just turn that on and the job is done for you. If you're not using 9.5 and other people aren't, the simple solution here is just to bounce your bass down to audio and then you can turn on warp in the audio clip and in the bottom left, you've got a transpose control and you can do it there. Either of these options, just make sure you have a little play around with the warp modes to get the best quality sound. But other than that, it's a couple of simple steps and you're good to go. Our second question is from Dan Taylor. Dan says, I'm not sure if you work like this, but I tend to put together uh, an eight bar loop and then I look to modify the loop to create other sections. However, I struggle to create cohesive loops and the loops I do create aren't much of a variation on the original. What do you do? Hi Dan, I hope you're well buddy. So with this, you've actually got perfect, perfect timing. We've got a YouTube series at the moment called Make A Track Fast. I'll put a link underneath this video for you. And this is exactly the stage that I'm at in the track at the moment, taking an original idea and developing it into other sections of the track. Now, I will answer it here for you as well though. You've got a myriad of different options here of how you can progress your idea. Everything from layering to adjusting filter cutoff, swapping your instruments out, changing the harmony, a whole real variety of things that you can do. But what you'll find is that when you listen to your genre, the same kind of variations seem to crop up quite regularly. You know, there's some popular things that you might want to consider doing. So my top tip for you find some tracks that you really like and that you aspire to, save them in a folder, and when you come to this part of the production process, if you find that your creative juices aren't really firing, you're not really up for it, you've not got too many great ideas, dive into that folder, have a listen, five, 10 minutes, and I'm sure you'll get some ideas that you can run with. Now, I just wanna close the question out by saying, remember this is the creative process. The chances are the first few attempts that you make aren't going to sound as good as you like but remember every idea that you have that you don't like too much is a stepping stone towards one that you do so just knuckle down with it enjoy it for the exploration for the curiosity try not to get too frustrated and always remember that whatever you're doing you will be moving ultimately in the right direction i hope that helps our next question is from graham crawford Graham asks, what advice would you give for sending tracks to labels? Also, should I invest in mastering before I send them or is it acceptable to send pre-masters? Hi Graham, so I'll deal with a quick bit first, which is the mastering. No need to bother at all. I would put a limiter on your track just to get it up to an acceptable level, but most likely they will want to master it themselves. Um, and if they don't, then they can tell you to, to do it. But I wouldn't do it to start with because you won't get any return on your master in time or if you spend money on it whatsoever if it doesn't get signed. And if it does and they want to do it themselves, likewise. So much better, just send it as, as it is. Most labels aren't expecting it to be mastered, but they will be expecting it to be of a reasonable level. For the second part of your question, any advice I'd have on how to send your music to labels, First up, research how the label would like to receive any demos. That's the number one important thing and make sure that you actually are sending your track to a label that's got similar music. Don't try coming in with some kind of left field approach and just wasting their time. Now, if you are gonna have to write some kind of email or some kind of message to them, start out with something personal. Why do you like the label? Are there any particular tracks? Are there any particular artists that you like? It doesn't need to be a long drawn out paragraph, just a couple of sentences so that they know straight off the bat that you're not spamming them, okay? 
Next up, it's obviously about you. If you do have any successes, it's worth just quickly shouting about those. I'm signed on label XYZ. Um, my tracks have been supported by DJs XYZ and so on. And then send just the tracks that you think are most relevant to the label. And maybe you wanna just drop a, a quick line in as to why you think your tracks are particularly relevant to their label as well. Keep it short, concise, make it clear you're not spamming them, be very polite, maybe even a line in just to say, you know, if you do feel the tracks are almost there but you're not ready to sign them, can you give me a, a quick line of feedback so I can improve for you? Anything like that, and then it's just a case of sit back, fingers crossed, hope for the best, and good luck to you, mate. So our final question is from BH Recordings. I really like darker sounding music. What is the best way to use accidental notes in your music and keep them cohesive with all the other musical elements? Okay, so you didn't leave your name. I'm gonna take a stab at it. I'm gonna call you Boris. Uh, very topical at the moment in the UK. So let's uh, get on with your question. For those that don't know, accidental notes are notes that fall outside of the scale that we're currently using in our piece of music. Now, you mentioned that you like darker sounding tunes, so it sounds to me like you're using these notes for dissonance. It's a pretty complex answer as to when you should and shouldn't be using accidental notes. Um, it would be very long for this video, and to be honest, probably a little bit beyond my understanding of music theory anyway. But what I can tell you with absolute certainty is that you can use them wherever you like, a lot of people get really hung up on music theory rules, but it's really what sounds good to you. Now, when we're using accidental notes or things like borrowed chords with notes in from other scales, what we're aiming to do is take the listener somewhere else briefly, take them away from the tonal center of our music. So with that in mind, if we're doing it briefly, that kind of negates a lot of the problems that you'll have around whether it's gonna sound correct melodically or harmonically, because you won't be pulling anyone away from the tonal center of your track for a great period of time. But you have got to ask yourself, when do I wanna do this? So there are two main options that I think you're gonna be referring to. One, if you're creating some kind of dissonance, something uncomfortable, something edgy, you're obviously creating tension. So when do you wanna do that? Maybe it's in the breakdown, so that they want the relief of the drop, or maybe you're doing it perhaps even before the breakdown, so that it gives you that kind of nice tension building up into the release of a breakdown. So that's one thing to think of, and the other reason that you might be doing it, of course, is to add interest. So again, you can just be listening to your track, and if you're finding a section is boring, maybe that's where you wanna drop a, th a few of these notes in, just to take someone away from that normal, comfortable loop that perhaps they've been listening to for a little bit too long. So to summarize, just consider where you wanna put them in, and if it sounds good to you, it will sound good to other people, I promise. I like putting this sort of edgy, wrong kind of stuff in my music. It's absolutely fine. Go for your life. Okay, before you go, I just want to let you know that I've got something very special prepared coming your way on Friday. To make sure you're one of the first to get it, be sure to subscribe at quantizecourses.com. That's all I'm going to say on this for now, this Friday, okay? Keep your eyes peeled. If you want to get a question answered on Ask Keith Mills, then make sure that you use Twitter or Instagram. The hashtag is Ask Keith Mills. If you don't want to do that and you don't use those services, no problem at all. Pop your name into the box underneath this video with your question and we'll make sure it gets answered for you. Take care. <laughs>